Okay, I hope you have those identities down in uh, 7.1 because we're going to add a few more to the list. We're going to look in 7.2 at the addition and subtraction formulas for sine and cosine. Look at, look at what this, this one says. This is, this is the addition and subtraction formula for a sine of two angles. Sine of A plus B is sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. Sine of A minus B would be sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. Notice if you have the sum of two angles, there's a plus in between. If you have a minus, if the difference of two angles, you have a minus in between. More importantly, notice this. The angles don't change. You see how you have A, B, A, B, A, B. It's the sine and cosine that are changing. Here you have the sine of the first, cosine of the second. Here you have cosine of the first, sine of the second. So you've got to keep that formula straight. So here's an example of why, how you might need it. Uh, you might want to find the... Uh, sine of 105 degrees. That's not one of our known angles, but it turns out it's the sum or difference of uh, two of our known angles. So how do you know how to find out which two? Here's a hint. There aren't that many to try. There's really basically 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, right? So anyway, it turns out it's it turns out it's um, it's 60 plus 45 is 105. So then you would say it's the sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus the cosine of the first, sine of the second. You get this. And from here on, you, you should be able to compute these rather easily by now. I, like, I encourage you strongly to draw pictures, right? What is the cosine of 60? Well, think of this in terms of our unit circle where the hypotenuse is 1. Cosine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. What's the cosine of 45? Cosine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. Uh, what's the cosine of 60? 1 half. What's the sine of 45? Radical 2 over 2. When you add them up, you get radical 6 plus radical 2 over 4. Keep on going. How about this one? Now, how would you find um, how would you find the sine of pi over or negative pi over twelve? Don't let the negative sign bother you. Um, remember, it's a sine's an odd function, so you, if you wanted to, you could just pull the negative out front. So the real question is, how do you write pi over twelve as the sum or difference of two angles? And, and sure enough, like I said, there aren't that many to, to 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 look at. There's pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three. And pi over twelve happens to be pi over three minus pi over four. So you'd use the difference one now. Notice this negative sign is staying out there though, right? It's factoring out. Sine of the first, cosine of the second, minus cosine of the first, sine of the second, because you have a subtraction. So what's the sine pi over 3? Let's go down here for a second. What is the sine pi over 3? Sine pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. What's the cosine pi over 4? Cosine pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. What's the cosine pi over 3? That becomes 1 half, and the sine pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. You end up, when you distribute the negative sign, you get negative radical 6 plus radical 2 over 4. Anyway, so keep that one straight. Now there's another one for, for cosine as well. Uh, cosine's a little different. If you have the cosine of the sum of two angles, there's a minus in between. Okay? If you have the cosine of, a mi of the subtraction of two angles, there's a plus. So the, the signs get reversed. Notice it's the cosine of the first, cosine of the second, plus, minus or plus the sine of the first, sine of the second. So again, the angles don't change. You see how you have A, B, A, B, A, B? It's, you have cosine and cosine, cosine A, cosine B. Here you have sine A, sine B. So keep, keep that rule straight. So how would you find the, the, sine of, the cosine of 7 pi over 12? Well, first of all, let me ask you this. Is it going to be a positive or a negative number? Think about it. Think, think about the cosine of 7 pi over 12. What quadrant are you in? Aren't you in quadrant 2? So th this should be a negative number, I believe, shouldn't it? Okay, let's see. You can write 7 pi over 12 as pi over 3 plus pi over 4, and then you, when you use the formula, it's the cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus the sine of the first, sine of the second. So cosine pi over 3 becomes 1 half, cosine pi over 4 becomes radical 3 over 2, sine pi over 3 becomes radical 3 over 2, sine pi over 4 is uh, radical 2 over 2, and you end up with radical 2 minus radical 6 over 4. Sure enough, that's a negative number, isn't it? How about this one? How would you find the cosine of negative 165 degrees? I'm going to use my um, uh, even and odd properties. The cosine of a negative angle is just cosine of the angle, so you can drop it if it's, a, if it's a cosine. This is a little tricky. How would you write 165 degrees in terms of two known angles? Well, we're in the second quadrant here, but if you think about it for a little bit, you can, you can think of it as 135. I think that's your pi over 4. Well, this should be a giveaway. It ends in a 5, right, folks? So you should be suspicious. You might have a 45 degrees somewhere. It turns out 135 plus 30 equals 165. So it's the cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus sine of the first, sine of the second. So what you would do is you would say, okay, um, 
Cosine 135, or over here in the second quadrant, is negative radical 2 over 2. Cosine 30 is radical 3 over 2. I, I, I should say negative radical 2 over 2, right? That's the cosine 135. Cosine 30 is radical 3 over 2, minus sine of 135 is positive radical 2 over 2, and sine 30 is 1 half. When you subtract that, notice uh, you, you do get a negative number here. By the way, there are ad um, addition formulas for tangent. I'm not going to cover those. I don't usually emphasize those as much, but you might see some in your, your teacher might, and there's some in the homework. He has to prove some identities. Prove that this equals this. I remember I, I would start probably on the left side, let's start on the messier side, and let, let's apply the... Um, the addition angle formula for cosine here and the subtraction here, so you get down to here, that looks like the difference of two squares kind of, doesn't it? So then when you multiply that out, you get this. How am I going to, this is kind of tricky, how does this equal this? Well, if you multiply it, if you square each of them, you get cosine squared x cosine squared y minus sine squared x sine squared y. Remember what, what, what I told you, look for the Pythagorean identity. It's just one of those things that you should look for. I'm going to replace cosine squared y with 1 minus sine squared y. I'm going to replace uh, sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. Why? Because I'm just trying to, I'm just going to try something. Another reason why I'm doing that is because notice you don't have any, all you have is cosine squared x here. You don't have a sine squared y here. And all you have is a sine squared y. You don't have a sine squared x. So I'm trying to get rid of those. I'm not sure it helps me. I'm just going to try it, okay? So when you multiply out, you get this, and then look, there you get, oh, these, look, these two cancel. This thing cancels with this thing, and sure enough, you have on the right side. So, so sometimes you just got to play around with this a little bit. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, this is, um, this is the good, this is one of those good old, um, what do you call these again? The uh, co-function identities. I told you, think about this in terms of the, a right triangle, remember? The cosine of the complement of an angle is the sine of the angle, if you draw a right triangle. But you could also apply the, um, difference formula for cosine, couldn't you? Cosine of the first, cosine of the second, plus sine of the first, sine of the second, to the left side. And then the left side, the cosine pi over 2 is 0, sine pi over 2 is 1, so that's an easy way to prove it also, by using the addition formula for cosine. This is what I was showing you earlier. You could also think of it like this, couldn't you? Okay, this last thing I want to talk about might come up in your physics class. It's very tricky, so you're going to have to pay close attention to this. We're going to use the addition angle formula for sine to, uh, to write, uh, if you have an expression, a number times the sine of x plus a number times the cosine of x. We're going to be able to write it just in terms of the, of the sine function. You might want to do that if you want to graph it, find the phase shift or the period. Okay, so, so, so we're going to use this idea. Notice the sine of x plus phi equals sine of x cosine phi plus cosine of x sine phi. I've just changed the order here, but it's still, it's still the same addition formula. This, this, is, this is the idea how it works. If you have a number times sine of x plus a number times cosine of x, if you let k be this the square root of a squared plus b squared, think of it as factoring out this number k as long as you divide by it. Notice it's still equal to a sine of x plus b cosine of x. Then you just let this first factor right here equal um, cosine of phi, and the second factor here, we're going to let that equal sine phi, and then since you've written it in terms of the addition angle formula for sine, you can write it just in terms of sine. So it's kind of tricky. Anyway, let me give you a specific example. Suppose you have uh, 3 sine of x minus 4 cosine of x, and you want to write it just in terms of sine. We, we, we find this number k. The k is, is the square root of 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, which is 5. So then cosine of phi, recall what we just said. Cosine phi is going to be 3 over 5. Sine phi is going to be this number here, negative 4 over 5. And you should observe that phi is in quadrant number 4 because the cosine is positive, the sine is negative. So if you wanted to find what phi were, was, you could take the inverse sine of a negative 4 fifths and you get negative 53 degrees. So putting it all together, then, you get that 3 sine of x minus 4 cosine of x. Remember, you factor out the 5 and divide by it. And then we're calling this first thing cosine phi. 3 fifths is cosine phi. Negative 4 fifths is sine phi. This is just the good old addition angle formula for sine, so you can write it like 5 sine of x plus phi, and then phi was negative 53 degrees. This is what we wanted to do. Pretty sneaky, huh? Anyway, all right. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.